Welcome to the 2019 F1 Brazilian Grand Prix Race Day Review. I said it here two weeks ago, folks. I said it two weeks ago. Vettel high as a goddamn kite. Did anyone see Vettel today? Charles Leclerc saw him. Yeah, he saw him all right. The rivalry has started. It is officially begun. Sebastian Vettel versus Charles Leclerc. Who's going to win? Who's going to finish top by the end of the season? It's all in hand. It's all in Charles's hand now. All it takes now is Charles to have another glitch at Abu Dhabi. Vettel gets in the top three. And maybe Vettel could steal that win at Ferrari. There's only 13 points between them. 13 points. Anyone could do it. The battle is for third. Yes. I know I said yesterday on my video, but nobody gives a shit. But after today, when the two cars collided, a double DNF by Ferrari. Double DNF. It's going to be interesting at Abu Dhabi to see what happened. I would love to be a fly on the wall at that debrief tonight. This video is a bit late coming. I wanted to get all the news out there. We all know what happened with Lewis Hamilton with um, that incident with Alban. I wanted to get all the news out there. I wanted to get all the videos out there. So when I do show my videos and you listen to the audio, it's a more, you know, a longer video. Because yesterday the video was only 20 minutes long because yesterday the, the qualifying was, who, come on. Honestly, un, who cares? Nobody cared about the qualifying yesterday. Nobody. There was just an atmosphere yesterday at the Grand Prix because Lewis Hamilton won the Drivers' Championship and Mercedes won the Constructors. There was just something about it that nobody cared. But this race was a good race, I've got to admit. I never thought it was going to be, but it was good. All I can say about Albon is, what a shame. What a shame. Today should have been his podium. He should have been on the podium today. Lewis Hamilton, okay, bit frustrated. I think, my opinion, that Mercedes' strategy today was all over the place. In my opinion, they should have kept Lewis out there a little bit longer. A little bit longer. They, should, they, they, they pitted Lewis too early, let's face it. They pitted him too early. They should have kept Lewis out there longer and then try and go for the long stink the hard. Lewis, Lewis Hamilton's throws were fine. They should have kept him out a bit longer. I would have went for the one-stop strategy, not the two. But when like I said, like Lewis, Red Bull, hats off the Red Bull. They had Mercedes number all day long. When Mercedes reacted, they reacted. When they pitted the second time, Red Bull pitted. It was a perfect strategy. But Albon, my, oh, the hats goes off to Albon. Next year, Mac Verstappen is going to have a driver right on his ass, Right on the bottom of his car. There's no way that Max Verstappen's going to get the best of Albon in every race next season. When Albon comes into the 2020 season with his car, his setup, his likes, his engineers, his, the way he likes his car. Because you remember, he joined halfway through the season. When he joins up with Max Verstappen, next year he's going to be he's going to be a bum. He's going to be like a big bum. Just like Charles Leclerc and Vettel, it's happening now. And it's going to continue to happen next season. We're going to have a nice big rivalry between the two Red Bull drivers. Definitely. Now Bottas. Where was Bottas today? Bottas 3.0. Bottas 4.0. Bottas 10.0. Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere. And to round it off, the DNF. DNF. His confidence is shut. I don't care if he comes into this next season and he says he's going to win the title and he's going to be a new man and he's going to grow his beard five inches bigger. Ain't going to make no difference. 
He's still not going to win the world title. Because in my opinion, he hasn't got it. Bottas does hasn't got it. To me, the next two drivers are going to take over Lewis Hamilton. Is going to be Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, maybe. And if Ocon can get in the car, he's going to be there. But Bottas, no chance. His time has come and gone. If people are going to say, oh, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just a mark. On, you're just an idiot on, the, on YouTube. Maybe. But my opinion. And if you don't like my opinion, get your own channel and state your opinion. If not, shut the fuck up. Bottas' time has come and gone. There's no, there's no time for Bottas. It's done. Next season, last season for Mercedes. But I don't know who's going to go there. Could it be Ocon maybe? Could it be Russell? I don't know. I really don't know. If Red Bull does not bring that engine to Max Verstappen next year, I can see Max Verstappen going to Mercedes to replace Bottas. I can see it. It's inevitable. They've got one more season to get this right. Honda, I don't care about the one today. Congratulations to Honda. Congra congratulations to Red Bull. But that's only one race. How many race wins you've had this year? Three race wins, maybe. Is that it? Three race wins. Not enough, boys. Not enough. If you want to keep Max Verstappen Red Bull, if you want to keep this guy, the future of F1, Max Verstappen, you have to provide him with the car. Because if you don't provide him with the car, like I said... He's going to um, Mercedes. And I'm sure Toto has got that checkbook ready waiting for him. He's probably even been... Every time I see him now, he's talking to Toto somewhere. Little sneaky talks around the corner. Little negotiations. L listen, Lewis Hamilton, he's not getting any younger. I still think he's got a couple of years in him. I still think he's going to win that eight times. I still think next year he's going to win the title. Seven-time world champion. And then after that, he'll get the eight. But I think he's not going to be around forever. We're gonna start looking to the future. We can't. We cannot. We cannot. We, we can always look back at the great drivers of the of the past, like Schumacher, Senna, Alonso, Frost. You know where I'm. Damon Hill, Nigel Mansell, the greats. Vilgil Nerve, Nerve, the greats. But we've got to start looking to the future. And in, in my opinion. The future belongs to Max Verstappen. It belongs to him. Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, I can't if he can get in a good car. Then you've got your and then you've got your Albans are gonna be there with Max Verstappen. He'll be right there with him. He's not gonna be Rubens Barrichello, Alban. He's not gonna be Valtteri Bottas. He ain't gonna be the war to hold up the people. He's gonna be there fighting for the championships. Albon, he might look like a nice guy when you speak to him, but when he gets in that car, he turns into Godzilla. He turns into Wolverine. Trust me. That guy is so talented, Albon. And he deserved the podium today. Another person who deserved the podium today and he didn't get on the podium was Carlos Sainz. He just got up here now that he's been, um, he got a, a penalty. Hamilton for that incident with Alban. Dropped him a few places down the grid. Science comes straight into third place. Why couldn't the FIA decide this before the podium? Hamilton came out and sky and he said, my fault. He said to, he said to um, Rubens Barrichello, I'm sorry what I've done. It was my fault. So the FIA should have just said to themselves, oh, oh look, he's told us. He just said it was his fault. So what we're going to do, we're going to reverse the decision and put science into third. Why did it take him so long to make the decision? Why? Lewis Hamilton said himself, he didn't stutter, he didn't say it in Chinese, he didn't say it in Indian, he didn't say it in Russian, he said it in English. Plain old English. He said, it was my fault. And I'm going to apologise to Albon. That's exactly what he said. Now, why... So, FIA must have thought, you know what? He said it. Done. Let's give it to Albon. Not Albon. Let's give it to Science. Third place. I would have loved to saw Carlos Science on that podium. 
I would have loved it. He's one of my favourite drivers. I loved him when he was at Toro Rosso. I thought Toto made a mistake when he didn't bring him to Mercedes. He made a mistake. He should have took him instead of Bottas. Bottas. I can't wait to see Bottas 3.0 next year. Maybe he's going to grow his hair and have dreadlocks. Maybe he's going to try and have his hair like Hamilton. He's going to have camera. Maybe he's going to come, he's going to have a beard like that, like ZZ Top all the way down there. And maybe then he'll win the title. <coughs> Not going to happen. I'm sorry for all you Bottas fans. Ain't going to happen. But what do I think of the race? It was a good race. Very interesting. But but the 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 um the moment the must see moment of the of the race was when Vettel and Charles Leclerc had their mini battle. And then Vettel after went off into a big rage. It doesn't matter if Vettel runs in the back of the car car, it doesn't matter if Vettel pushes the guy off the track. Just like he'd done with Matt Verstappen at Silverstone, it went right into the back of Matt Verstappen's car. And he still said, what happened? It weren't my fault. <laughs> you know, come on, Vettel. This is what I like about Vettel. It's like he gets his hand caught in the cookie jar and he's still denying. He's a funny guy. And he's, and he's still one of the best drivers around. But can I see Vettel winning the title? I don't know. I don't know. Got these new regulations coming now. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I still think Lewis, going back to Lewis, I still think Lewis is going to win it next year. I think Lewis will win it next year, and I think he'll win the eighth title. And that'll be it. But, yeah, good race today. After yesterday, dog shit qualifying, it was a decent race. So, the race started. Lights out, and away we go. We actually saw a green light today. Not supposed to be a green light. It's supposed to be just red now, and then the start. Because a lot of the drivers were complaining that they saw the green, and they went to the red, and was getting confused. I don't know how you can get confused, but they was getting confused. Great start by Hamilton. Hamilton was in third, fourth place. He went, no, third place, and he went and he kept his, he went straight into second. Late breaks on the first corner, and done Charles Leclerc. Oh, I don't know if it was Charles Leclerc or Vettel. No, Vettel, yeah. He'd done Vettel on the first corner. Brilliant takeover. And for some reason, where was Ferrari's straight line speed? Where was it? It's been there since the summer break. Every time they've been, they've been getting investigating about um, certain oils or petrol they've been using, they said it was something to do with the straight line speed. The FIA said they're still investigating. And ever since that investigating come out in two weeks ago in the USA, the straight line speed's gone. Where's this straight line speed by Ferrari? Hamilton took over, just took over Vettel. It's like Vettel was in a three-wheeler Robin Reliant and Hamilton was a big, in a BMW M4. Vettel had no answer for it. I thought, here we go. Eh, 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 eh. Lights are going off. Maybe it goes back to that point where people were talking about the oil or the petrol they've been using. If it was illegal, illegal, we don't know. FIA, like I said, is still investigating it. He had no chance, by the way. One second. When Hamilton passed him, he was gone. Then, as soon as he passed him, commentators come out and said, it's between Max Verstappen and Hamilton. That's what he said. So basically, then, as the race went on, Ricardo, bless him, he tried to pass... Um, Oh. Ricardo tried to go go around Magnussen. It was his lap eight. He tried to go around to Magnussen. To me, I don't think Ricardo deserved this penalty. He got a penalty for it, but I don't. I saw Ricardo. He went round. He, he went round Magnussen. He had enough. Magnussen had enough space. There's no way. There's no way that Ricardo could go. He was on the line. He gave Magnussen enough space, but Magnussen, to me, still turned in. And they both clashed a little bit. Kind of that bashed up his wing, up Ricardo's ring, at the back of his car. And Ricardo get penalised for it. In my opinion, he didn't deserve that penalty. If I was Renault, I'd be pissed off about that. He did not deserve that penalty. Not at all. Right? So the lap after, he couldn't go on, Ricardo. He didn't retire, but he couldn't go on. He went into the pits, 
changed the back of his wing, and he was in the tire. He was in there for 10.1 seconds. That's not bad when you're changing your wing and your tires. Um, he changed his tire to soft, and he changed his wing, and it was a 10.1 second decent pick for what they had to do. But there you go. After that, Ricardo right at the back, plum last. He was doing so well. You had Norris battling with the Ferraris. You had Ricardo battling with the Ferraris. Lando Norris was on it today. At the beginning, he was on it. So, this is where Ferrari's, Ferrari's strategy team came out. They said, come on the radio. And he said to Ferrari, he said to Vettel, plan A plus two. What is plan A plus two? Does anyone know what plan A plus two is? If you know what plan A plus two is, put your comments below and I will respond. Plan A, plan a plus two. At the time, I didn't give a shit. I didn't care. I just thought, you know, what is plan A plus two? Lewis said to Bono, let's put some pressure on Max. Because at the beginning, everybody was thinking, they weren't sure what strategy they were going for. They weren't, go, they, they weren't sure if they were going for a two-stop strategy or one-stop strategy. At the beginning... So I think um, Hamilton thought that they was going for a two one stop strategy. Um, 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 Max Verstappen, but he wasn't. He was pushing that car at the beginning. So Max, so Louis said to his engineer, "By now, I think he's going for a two stopper. Let's try and get him. He ain't going for a one." So Louis will start putting pressure on him. All right. Five second tie penalty. Ricardo got. That's what they were announced. Like I said, going back to previous, I don't think he deserved it. They announced on the, on the um, tel t TV, five second time penalty for Ricardo. My opinion, it was bullshit. Lap 21. This is where I thought, what the, what the shit's going on here? Lewis Hamilton pitted. Lap 21. Lewis Hamilton, two laps before saying his tyres are okay. His tyres they look, they looked okay. They weren't graining. I never saw that. They, they looked fine. If it was me, I would have waited a bit longer. I would have waited to at least lap 30 plus, then pit and go for the hard. But they weren't doing that. They were trying to outdo, um, they were trying, trying, trying to outdo um, Red Bull. They were trying to outsike him, like they've been doing to Ferrari halfway through the season. They tried to do it with Red Bull. Same thing what they did in Hungary when they outsiked, they outdone Red Bull. They tried to do it again, similar. So we're coming to the pit, 21. 2.5 seconds, soft tyres. Max pits the lap after. Puts his tyres on Max um, um, to try and um, beat him out of the pits. Lap 22, puts the tyres on there. 1.9 seconds. 1.9 seconds. That's one thing I'd say about Red Bull. Red Bull's got the best, best pit strategy, best pitting. I think they got down to 1.5 at one time, the record, or 1.4. I don't know what it is. One of them. But they've got the record. But 1.9 seconds is amazing. The other teams don't get nowhere near that. So obviously that hat Max was happening. That's what we thought. So when Max came out of the pits, Kibitza came out. To me, it was fair. There, were, there was some sort of investigation. I don't think anything was done about it. It's just the way it is. You got cars coming out the pits in and out. That's just the way it is. Kibitza came out. Max got stuck by Kibitza. That gave Hamilton another. Hamilton would have um, passed him anyway. But he gave him more of a time to pass him. He went past him. Matt, and then when he come out of the pits, Max was stuck by Kibitza. He cleared Kibitza. And then he was chasing Hamilton. Lap 23, Max passes Lewis on the toe. So now, Hamilton's got the medium tyres on. Max has got the soft tyres on. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm? Brand new soft tyres Red Bull. Brand new. They saved it for the race. Nice and shiny. Went past um, Lewis Hamilton on the toll. Nothing Lewis could have done. Nothing. I don't care who was in that car. I don't care what racer was in that car. There's nothing Lewis could have done. He could try and defend for so much, but there's nothing he could do. It was on the straight. DR asked when he gets the toll. Gone. Max got him. Lewis passes Alban on lap for M24 because he was behind Alban. So that was a decent passing. No collide there. It was a fair pass. Albon pits 2.6. And um, that, that's slow for Red Bull, but it was 2.6 seconds. Lap 25, medium tyres. He was gone. I thought Al Albon was probably going to do a one-stop strategy. Obviously, it never worked out that way. But at the time, I thought he was. 
Lap 26, 2.4 seconds. Vettel picks again, picks for the first time, put the million times, and then Abe's Ferrari, they're going for a one stopper. So I think that was, for me, I would have put the hard tyres on Vettel. I think Ferrari got it wrong this time, all the time, but they got it this, they got it wrong again, and I think it was my opinion I would have put the hard tyres on. If he was going for the, if he was going for the one stop strategy and it's lap twenty six, you got so many laps left, 30, 30 laps left. Why put the medium tires on? You might as well just put the hard tires on. Going for a one stop every time, put the hard tires on. If you start off on the soft and you do twenty plus laps, put the hard tires on. Forget it, forget the medium, hard. So Bottas picked at lap twenty sevens, two point six second hard tires. Now Bottas picked at lap twenty seven. Which I thought was not that bad. It was good. I would have pitted Lewis at lap 30. But they never, like I said, they never pitted Lewis at lap 30. They put him on lap, they pitted him on lap 21. Mistake. But they pitted Bottas on lap 27. And he was going for a one-stopper. And that was 2.6 seconds hard tyres. Now, Ferrari comes out again with a plan C. Comes out and says, plan C, Charles. Done. Charles pits, puts the hard tyres on. 2.3 seconds, lap 30. That's where I would have pitted Lewis, lap 30, the one that pitted Charles, but they never. So, that incident earlier with Max Verstappen and Kibitza, they announced it on the telly that the um, Kibitza got a five second time penalty. And you know what? Kibitza, he doesn't give a shit. Trust me. So, he gets it, he'll be gone by, he'll be, he'll be racing somewhere else next year. He ain't gonna be in F1, so I don't think he really but I don't think he's really bothered anyway. So it was unsafe release, that's what he got done for five second time penalty. Now, Ferrari comes on the radio again. Master strategist, master strategist, should be working at Tesco, should be working at Aldi's, should be working at the local car wash, washing cars. That's all the good for Ferrari strategy team. Diabolical from the beginning of the year to now. To the beginning of the season in Australia. You know what? From the beginning of winter testing. From then up to now, strategy is in the toilet. Losers. Grade A losers. That's where their strategy team, that couldn't organise a flip. That couldn't organise nothing between themselves. Nothing, Ferrari. Nothing. Master strategies. If it was my, if it was my, if Ferrari were my master strategies, I'd be broke. I'd lose, I'd lose everything. So, Ferrari, anyway. Bottas, he goes, Lewis, he goes, Plan C, Charles. Hard tyres, lap 30, like I said. Unsafe release by um, Kibitza gets five second time penalty. Plan B, lap 34, said to Vettel. I think they was going for another pit strategy. I don't know why, because he only put his tyres on a few laps before, but I kept saying to Vettel, Plan B, lap 34 to Vettel. So, we'll see what Plan B is further on. Bottas picks again, puts a medium tyres on 2.7 seconds. To me, Mercedes' strategy today was diabolical. It was, on, it was on par with Ferrari. Strategy, you know what it was to me? He's not there. The, the, the wolf's not there. That's what it is. Toto's not there. The gaffer is not there. That's the reason why all this is happening, in my opinion. They, never, they won't talk about that on the Mark TV. All the Ferrari boys and the Red Bull boys. Paul that S there. And Simon Lazenbury and all them, man. They're not going to talk about that on the TV. Nah. But it's in my opinion. And it's not about being a Mark. Because I'm a Mark. I'm just an F1 fan. The, the Wolf wasn't there. The man the, 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 who controls everything. It wasn't there. That strategy team was all over the place. They put Bottas into the pits and put medium hard tyres on. And then they put him into the pits. How many laps later? Um, so many like 10 or 15 laps later and put them in and put the me medium tyres on. Why? 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 Why didn't they just keep him out and then put the medium tyres on and then the soft? And that would have been better. But no, they went the other way. They put the hard tyres on and they put them in, put the medium tyres. But us is all over the place. All over the place. Now, lap 30. Album picks again. Um, lap 51. Puts the soft tyres on. Now, Bottas, he was chasing Charles Leclerc for about five laps. Compromised his race, in my opinion. His position where he finished. That Mercedes car in high altitude cannot follow cars. They proved that when it was in Austria.
the overheating issues that Mercedes got in their car in the high altitude tracks like Singapore, Austria, them kind of tracks, they that car is not re is, is not good in the high altitude track. And it proved it again today. Bottas was chasing Leclerc, couldn't pass him. He was all over the place, Bottas. Tried his best, tried to go down the inside. Weren't happening. It just wasn't happening. The power wasn't there. He cooked his car like a pie in the oven, Bottas. Like a pie, like a steak on a grill. Smoke started coming out like the barbecue in my garden right now. That's what it was. I just saw a cloud of smoke coming out of Bottas' car. Like he's been cooking a barbecue on the back of his car. And I said, here we go. I can smell a DNF. Definitely can smell a DNF. I can see the DNF coming. And what happened? He had a DNF. Bottas. He had to pull his car on the side. Safety car come out. First the yellow flags come out for the warning. And it was inevitable there was going to be a safety car. So the safety car come out. Lap 55 safety car. Vettel pits, and then Charles um, pits on the safety car, puts the soft tyres on. Now this is where Mercedes made a strategic a mistake, a big, big, big mistake. Ferrari, no, not Ferrari, Mercedes. When that safety car come out, Max went into the pits. Max went into the pits. Now I think Vettel should have went into the pits. I don't know why you never... I'm not better. Hamilton should have went into the pits. You're chasing them anyway. Anyway, you got the old medium tyres. Why don't you come to the pits at the same time as um um um, um as um, Max Verstappen? Why? Because if you would have come into the pits at the same time as Max Verstappen, you would have had your nice, nice brand new soft tyres. Um, Max Verstappen put on his used soft tyres. And could you was behind the virtual safety car, you would have had a, bit, a good chance to get him on the toll. But what did Mercedes do? Now nah, we're going to keep Lewis out and a dry, dry ass medium tyres. So you had Albon pitting. You had Vettel pitting. You had Max Verstappen pitting. Did, but did um, Lewis pit? No. And I knew then it was a mistake straight away from then. It was a mistake. What a error. By Mercedes. It was inevitable that Max Verstappen was going to pass him after that safety car. There's no way that Lewis could have withstand the speed for Max Verstappen at the end. There was at least 10 laps to go. There's no way he could have kept Max Verstappen behind him. And Max Verstappen was on them soft tyres. And he was on the dry old medium tyres. It was never going to work that way. Never. They compromised his race. Right there. Like I said, Toto wasn't there. So, after the safety car, lap 60, Max, like I said, just burns past Lewis. Boom. Like Lewis was driving the 1980s Mini Cooper. And Max Verstappen was driving a straight line speed with DRS Bugatti. Lewis had no answer with them dry old medium tyres. Dry like my ball bag. Lap 64, Albon kills Vettel. Now that just that, that, that must have hurt Vettel, man. That must have hurt him. Albon just went past him. And Vettel must have thought, oh my gosh! What is going on here? Why can't I get ahead? I've come into this Grand Prix, I want to win it, and Albon just passes me. Like I should be in go karting. What is going on? That's what Vettel must be thinking. He must have been thinking, I oh, ain't having that. There's no way I'm going to have that. No way. So what happens? Who comes up behind him? <laughs> oh boy, it was Charles Leclerc's teammate. He was about to bath Vettel as well, but what did Vettel do? I ain't having that. You ain't passing me. No chance. Boom! Straight into Charles Leclerc. Just enough to put him off, just to nudge him. And then what happened? Charles got a puncher. Double DNF. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And then Vettel got a DNF as well. 
Double DNF. You couldn't have written this so perfect. It was so funny. And after Vettel was on the radio, it was ranting in German. It was ranting in Italian. It was ranting in Polish. It was ranting in English. He was ranting. I think if it would have got chose at that time, it would have throttled him. Throttle. Vettel weren't happy at all. And after Vettel says, what the hell? What the hell? He was ranting. You couldn't stop him. And I was laughing on my sofa. It was so funny. So. Double DNF. Safety car comes out. Vest on the radio. Ranting like I said. Then. Safety car come out. I mean that. This is where um, Hamilton stayed at. Not before he stayed at. And this one I think he should have pitted in. Never. And then the safety arc continues. When I was talking about before, when I had the silver first safety car, that's the, the um, Hamilton didn't pick then. But he pitted, he should have pitted on this safety car when um, on lap 66. He should have pitted. Because then if he would have pitted then, like I said, he was on the hard medium tyres and we would have got him through. So it was a mistake from before. He was this safety car, the second safety car. He should have pitted and he never. And that's where, to me, he lost the race. It all started again. And, yeah, Albon nearly passed Hamilton. Albon nearly passed him. Albon, um, um, Hamilton weren't having it. Because after the restart, Vic, uh, Max Verstappen was gone. Left, he just checked out. Within the two, three laps, he checked out. There's nothing Hamilton could have done. So Albon tried, it, tried his business around the corner. He left a little gap open, but he, as, he, as he closed the door, Hamilton tried to stick his nose in the gap, and he weren't having it. He weren't having it. They both collided. Albon lost position and went straight to the back. Hamilton kept his position. No, he lost position because he was in second. Gasly sneaked through, got the second place, which I'm so happy for Gasly. For the season Gasly had, and he's... And he, look, at look. Gasly, people say, was he good enough to go to um, Red Bull? He went to Red Bull... And you can see now that the pressure, he just couldn't handle it. you got some drivers that got all the talent in the world, but when they step up to the big time, the pressure gets to them and they can't handle it. And that's what happened to Gasly. But he's in a good team. He's in a good team. He got his, he got his first podium today. His first podium. Come second, Hamilton stayed in third, but it was inevitable. I knew Hamilton was going to get a penalty. I knew he was going to get a penalty. He come out and, like I said at the beginning of the video, he came out and he said to Rubens Barrichello, in my fault, I, Al, um, Albon should have got this, not me. I'm sorry, I'm going to apologise. And the FIA should have done the decision then, give him the penalty there and let Science go into third and let Science have his podium. And he never, he never had his podium. And that that's, for me, Science should have had his first podium today. His first podium. And it never happened. But that's just the way it was. So, that's the end of the race. Max Verstappen wins. And the result, how it finished is... Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen third. Second, Pierre Gasly third. Weren't Lewis Hamilton. I think Lewis Hamilton seventh. Now, second, Science should be. And, yeah, you've got Carlos Science. He should be fair. Fifth, he's, um, this is the way it's standing now. Fifth, Kimi Raikkonen. Sixth, Antonio Giovinazzi. Seventh. And, um, Daniel Ricciardo, 8th Lando Norris, 9th Sergio Perez, 10th Daniel Fiat, 11th Kevin Magnussen, 12th George Russell, 13th Roman Agrojan, 14th Alexander Alban, 15th Nico Hockenberg, 16th Robert Kubica, 17th Sebastian Vettel, 18th Charles Leclerc, 19th Lance Stroll, and Bottas with a D and F. Right. Let's do the constru well, constructions, obviously, we don't really need to go through that, do we? Um, let's have a look at the driver standings. Lewis Hamilton obviously is one, Bottas second, Max Verstappen third. So the battle really now, all that can happen really is the battle for second. Most likely Max Verstappen is going to finish third, I reckon. But it's not really over yet. Vettel, he's not going to get it now, is he? I think. Um, Vettel, that's it. The only way Vettel can pass Charles Leclerc now, if Charles Leclerc has a DNF at Abu Dhabi and Vettel wins the race. That's the only way he's going to pass him. 
if or if if Charles Decker, if Charles Decker finishes in the top eight, he's gonna he's gonna beat Vettel for the um, um sing, drivers championship. So you got Max, he's got third sealed for Charles Leclerc sealed fourth. So really that's it, really that's how it's gonna finish. So yeah, Sebastian Vettel's so fifth, sixth Pierre Gasly, seventh Carlos Sainz, eighth Alexander Albon, ninth Daniel Ricciardo, tenth Sergio Perez, eleventh Lando Norris, twelfth um, Kimi Raikkonen. 13th Nicole Hülkenberg, 14th Daniel Fiat, 15th Lance Stroll, 16th Kevin Magnussen, 17th Antonio Giovinazzi, 18th Roman Gojad, 19th Robert Kubica and 20th George Russell. So, let's have a look at some audio here. Um, let's have a look into, we've got Albon here, let's go about start up of Albon. Um, full sorry for the kid, Albon. But he's definitely a future star of F1. It's just obvious you can see his talents there. And to me, he's gonna he's gonna be with Max Verstappen next year. So let's for Albon. We had some fun before the incident with Hamilton. Let's play this. If you go down this road, you'll be looking over your shoulder the rest of your life. All right, I'll look at Alex, it was looking so good towards the end of those closing moments and then it kind of all got went wrong. Can you just talk me through it? Yeah, um, to be honest, the start of the race I was a bit in no man's land and then with the safety car we brought it back and uh, had some fun on the restarts. It felt a bit like Baku again. <laughs> but um, yeah, obviously Lewis had good grip when he pitted and um, I think he would have got me. No matter what, he would have got me into turn one the next lap. So, um, yeah, it was a shame. Um, to be honest, I didn't even expect it. I was uh, busy on the corner because I saw on the exit and there was a gap there and I, I didn't think it was there was a move there. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, anyway. So, basically, we say that Lewis would have got him anyway, but you never know, do you? You never know. Um, there you go. That Carlos, there you go. He's still one of the pole, dude. That's great, isn't it? I oh, just saw something on here. It says Carlos Sainz celebrates his first podium with McLaren. So even though he was an official on the podium when we could see on the TV, he still went up on the podium with his team and got his first podium with McLaren. And I'm going to play some audio, see if you can hear it. 38 seconds long. That was nice of them. They went on the podium anyway, even though there was no official, probably not on the TV, but they went up there and said, look, science P3. And he deserved it. He deserved it at the end of the day, right? Lewis got the penalty, and it's a shame that the FIA and the stewards, whatever, didn't um, sort it out before. Obviously, the new was Lewis admitted that he'd done it, so they should have just done it there. Science would have got his podium, but he'd done it anyway. Went up there with his team. He was good. It's something to remember. So, Pierre Gasly. That's exactly why I love motorsport. Yeah, and he deserved it. Let's play that. Insane. Incredible. <laughs> um, I don't think you have any idea how loud the cheer was in this pen from those grandstands, from seemingly every team in the pit lane. People are genuinely delighted for you today. Uh, thanks to, to all, all the people, to everyone, you know. Big thanks to Toro Rosso and Honda that just pushed me so hard in Spa. I pushed them so hard as well to just tell them we need to make the best out of every opportunities we have. And, you know, today is my first podium in F1. You dream about being in F1. You dream about your first podium. But then when it, when it happens, that's why I was shouting on the radio. I just had so many emotions. 
um, yeah, coming through me and coming through my mind. And uh, yeah, just a massive thank you to all the people that supported me since I started my career to put me in that position. And yeah, today that's uh, exactly why I love motorsport for this kind of moment. It's just uh, unbelievable. You've said all year you don't forget how to drive and you, and you showed <laughs> that today. Importantly though, the points that you've got for that podium drag you guys you're like that with Renault now for yeah, fifth in the championship that podium, that podium brings us a lot of money so it's still not over we still need to push in Abu Dhabi but if we manage to uh, yeah hold that position in the championship why not get even better but there was 10 millions between seventh and six in the championship so I think we'll celebrate with, with uh, friends tonight yeah. well done man thank you yeah, so now it's extra 10 million for them yep yeah, well deserved first podium yep yeah. He's had an up and down season, but he's got his, he went back to tour wrestle and he's made it work. So we've got Max Verstappen now. He's saying basically, um, happy we had a race like this. A phenomenal drive today. Congratulations. Yeah, it was good. Uh, start was good. Then I think um, we did what we could in the first stint. Uh, yeah, just caught out a bit with the traffic and then the traffic in, in my in the pit lane as well, which almost uh, took me out. But uh, yeah, then uh, from there onwards, I think, um, yeah, Lewis was very, very quick, always always there, thereabouts. Um, I have to say, after the first stop, I think we were quite similar in pace. But then on the on the medium tire, the yellow one, he was again quite, quite quick. But uh, yeah, with the safety car and everything, we, we of course boxed again for, for the red tires. And I think at the end of the day, that gave us the, um, gave us the win today. Of course, it was still a, a fun move around the outside with yeah. Lewis, but you can see it was very fair racing uh, in turn one and in turn four. So, yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed that. Some great fights. Was it as much fun as it looked? It was, yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes you would like to, to have a race and you just control it, but actually now after the race, I'm very happy that I had a race like this. It could have been a one-two for the team. Alex obviously got hit towards the end, but to see Pierre there, obviously your teammate from the start of the year, how, how, how good was that for, for you and, and him to be up there? Yeah, of course, a shame that Alex was not on the podium. It would have been a great result for Red Bull, but I'm also now very happy for Pierre. I mean, he's had a, a tough, tough season. With, at the end, I think when he got back to Toro Rosso, he had good results already. But to see him on the on the podium now actually makes me really happy because he really deserves it. He's he's a great guy. He's a great personality, and uh, he's also a fast driver, as you can see. Thanks, man. Thank yeah, that's what I mean. That's what won in the race. That's what I said. When the safety car come out, they pitted. Um, they never pitted Lewis. Lewis stayed out in the median tires. They pitted Max. He put the soft soft tires on. There was ten laps to go. And when he came up, Max just went straight past Lewis easy, had his soft tyres on, and that's when the race was won, in my opinion. And even Max Verstappen said it as well. That's what I said. That's when the race was won then, with them tyres. The strategy for Mercedes was all over the place. They should have pitted Lewis as soon as they pitted Max when the safety car came out. Max pitted, Lewis never. Big mistake. He was always gonna, he was always going to pass him. He was always going to pass him. So, Lewis Hamilton, ultimately, I felt, I felt I was in the wrong. Fair enough. Honest. But he's still a six-time world champion. Booyah! I'm a suppository of information. Grammarly helps you say what you... Lewis. What a drive, what an afternoon, so much action out there. Some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff with Max, but let's start with, with the moment with Alex Albon. Um, obviously, at the, at the end, how did you see it from, from inside the cockpit? Uh, I mean, it's easy, it happened so fast, honestly, but I saw a gap and I kind of went for it, and um, it, it opened up more and more, and then it closed right at the end. So, I, I don't really know, I'd have to re-watch re it, but I, I, ultimately, I felt like I, I was in the wrong. Do you, that, particularly as I'm coming from behind, I'm the one that hit him rather than him, him hit me. Um, but I was, I was giving it everything, and I left nothing on the table. And sometimes when you push that hard, uh, I think I got the torpedo today. But I'll, I'll rewatch it, and you know, most likely my opinion won't change on that. But it may, it may do. Um, and ultimately, I apologise immediately to to him. Um, you know, he's been driving fantastically well, and uh, of course, I never want to end someone's race. I know it wouldn't be your, be your intention, obviously, with that, but um, how much did it damage your car? How hard was it over those last few laps? Uh, yeah, um, the steering was tilted to the right. 
uh, but it was driving okay. Um, it was a damn hard race today. I tell you, I gave it everything and more. I hadn't, there was nothing left, nothing left from from the pit lane entry to the pit lane exit. There was just nothing left. I didn't. I think I made one mistake with one small lock up. I think into turn one, but then otherwise it was pretty spot on. So and obviously the one with uh, Alex, but. Uh, you know, it was a race to, to, to be tested, to really push the boundaries on lots of areas and to keep up with the Red Bull today, they were just so fast um, and they killed us on the straights. You had a great dice with Max on more than one occasion, did you enjoy that? <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, ultimately when you're, when you're the one being attacked and you've got uh, nothing when it comes to power, but I think he's got a much fresher engine than me or they've got, I don't know what it is, more power or whatever it is, but uh, we're on it, you know, I'm still in my... My, my season engine uh, number three is where I think they're on number five or six so maybe they've updated theirs um, uh, we've had no upgrades since obviously since uh, since Spa or whatever it was so nonetheless I, I you know I hope people enjoyed it today and uh, congratulations to Max. If the stewards do decide to give you a, a penalty after the race it would mean Carlos would take that podium spot would have been his his first podium would you do the thing and, and give him uh, the trophy if, if indeed they, they were to give you a, a penalty? I don't think I keep the trophy. I mean, I don't care to keep the trophy. I only care for about number one, so that's, you can have the trophy. Yeah, if that's the case. It doesn't mean anything to me, so. Basically, that's what he's saying. Um, he's saying it was the engine. He said Max had a good race today. Nothing could do the way the strategy was. But he's saying that they haven't upgraded their engine for ages, for a long, long, long time. They've, got, they've, got, they've still got the same dry engine, Max. Um, They've got the new spec on their engine, so maybe he's saying he's nothing he could do the straight line that was fast, especially here. This car, it's this track, this definitely favours Red Bull. And that's it, that's the end of the interviews. Nothing for Bottas. No, nothing. That's it. So, that's the end of the review. Next race is in two weeks' time. We're going to be at Abu Dhabi. Not a good track for me. I like the setup a lot. The lights, the glitz, the glamour. Where we, it's nice to look at. It's a night race. But the actual track to me, I don't really like. So, yeah. I'll see you in two weeks time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram. There's my channel there. Follow me on Twitch. And follow me on um, Twitter. So, Solo P1. Signing out of the 2019 F1 Grand Prix Race Day review.